Ukraine's main intelligence directorate has stated that it carried out an operation to destroy Russian Baltic fleet minesweeper Alexander Obakov, the agency reported on Monday. The ship was based in the city of Baltiysk in Kaliningrad region and was supposed to go on combat duty. Due to the mysterious appearance of a hole in the gas duct, water got into the engine, the main intelligence directorate revealed in a statement and published a video of the engine inspection. According to agency, the minesweeper's repair will be technically complex and expensive. There have been no official reports from Russia regarding the problems with Obakov. This was the second case of Ukraine sabotaging a Russian warship in the exclave, which lies between Poland and Lithuania some 400 kilometers from Ukraine's northwestern border. 3 October 2024, Alexander Obuchov. There is a main engine for the main engine because of the falling of water inside the engine. Была разобрана турбина, снят компенсатор, идет поиск отверстия, через которое поступала вода внутрь. Двадцать девятого сентября две тысячи двадцать четвертого года город Балтийск тральщик Александр Обухов. Ukrainian interceptor drones that hunt Russian reconnaissance UAVs have ended the era of Russian dominance in aerial reconnaissance on the Russian-Ukrainian front. The British publication The Times writes. It is noted that at the beginning of this year, Russian reconnaissance drones Orlan 10, Zala and Supercam constantly hung over Ukrainian positions. Flying at an altitude of up to 5,000 meters, they were inaccessible to Ukrainian weapons on the ground and the electronic warfare systems were ineffective. In conditions where the Ukrainian armed forces did not have reconnaissance drones of this class and did not have effective means of countering Russian drones, Russian drones became a deadly problem for the Ukrainian armed forces. Thanks to such constant monitoring of the entire frontline zone, the Russians were able to identify and destroy Ukrainian military equipment, including very valuable models with impunity. In particular, this is how the Russians were able to destroy two Patriot missile launchers near Pokrovsk, more than 30 kilometers from the front line in March. But in June, Russian reconnaissance drones suddenly lost their advantage. Soldiers of the 38th Marine Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces fighting in the Kherson direction, tired of constant surveillance from Russian drones, found a way to counter them. A modified FPV drone was able to catch up with the Russian Zala drone at an altitude of 1,300 meters and destroy it. This successful experiment was soon repeated. The Marines' invention attracted the attention of the Ukrainian High Command and soon this experiment was extended to the entire front line. Within a few weeks, Russian reconnaissance drones were raining down from the sky under the blows of Ukrainian interceptor drones. In the early days of this summer, when we were first working on how to use FPV at high altitude, the Russians couldn't understand why they were suddenly losing so many drones, recalls Jesus, a 36-year-old Marine. Ukrainian commanders remain tight-lipped about the details of the new method their FPV kamikaze pilot units are using, but their success is clear. Across the front lines, Russian reconnaissance drone losses have quadrupled while the time they spend over Ukrainian positions has been cut dramatically. Now the Russians are looking for ways to counteract Ukrainian interceptor drones. They resort to various tricks, increasing the altitude and speed of reconnaissance flights, switching to night flights, installing rear view cameras, applying camouflage to drones and even applying Ukrainian identification marks to their drones. But the Ukrainians also continue to improve their interceptor drones. In particular, they have already learned to detect enemy drones by their heat signature, 
which makes it possible to hunt enemy drones at night.